Right, great tins. Here we go. The pet, the practical assessment task. The things you are, or the thing you are all fearing. I don't know why, because it's not that difficult. Um, but let's go through everything and make sure that you know exactly what's expected of you as per the pet document. Okay, so as you can see here, this is the grade 10 pet document. Uh, I'm just going to go through, right? Please remember, with your pet document, yeah, they mentioned to us, your pet document or your pet, this is your year-long assignment. Um, you will have to create a word processing document. In other words, a word document that has a short description of the problem and task, a focus question and a set of high quality questions, a list of appropriate information sources, information which has been sifted, evaluated and summarized, a questionnaire, a spreadsheet and a report on your investigation. This pattern is going to be divided into two phases. Um, as you can see at the bottom here, phase one being 40 marks and phase two, you're looking at a total of 60 marks. And this is what's going to give you your 100 marks. Now, please, the pet is extremely important because this does count for 25% of your final get mark. Okay, so please don't take this lightly. Um, it can actually be easy marks for you um, towards your end of year mark. So let's go through and let's see what we've got here so our topic is on fake news okay i'm not going to explain too much in this you can have a look through the the topic itself but here's already one or two bits of information first of all we know what the topic is okay we know what has been asked of us so we need to research fake news however the focus in that and this is where they give us the focus question right so again, here's your first tip. They have given you the focus question. When you need to put that in your document, this is the focus question that you're going to use. What do they ask us to do? Your task is to investigate how fake news can have an impact on our lives, including examples, um, spreading of fake news, and ways to identify and prevent fake news. So this is already telling you um, everything you need to know in terms of what you are expected to do. Then they mention underneath, choose from the following research questions to assist you in your investigation. So these questions you are using just as a basis to help you find out some more info. And within the PET document, um, there are a couple of links to um, some videos that will help you with this particular topic, just to understand what fake news is all about. Okay, so I hope you're all with me on that point. All right, they just mentioned what we will need. They mentioned to you about dishonesty. In other words, not copying other people's pets. Um, you know, all these, all these type of things. Also, plagiarism. Please don't just copy and paste from the internet. That is not going to work because if we run that assignment through a plagiarism checker and we find you have done that, um, we will be deducting marks for that as well. So, in phase one, here they go into more detail. Right, of what they expect from you for phase one and for phase two. Um, I'll be going through that now as we get into this. Okay, so let's look at the instructions for phase one. The purpose of the pet, of this phase of the pet, is to determine what the problem is and what needs to be done. Now, we already know that we are investigating fake news. We want some examples, etc. What will the focus of our investigation be? That is the focus question that was given to us earlier. So it is in your pet document. Um, what data and information you will need to answer the focus question. So you've got to answer that focus question. Um, where you're going to find information sources. Whether the information is gathered is relevant. And then you are to administer a questionnaire. Right. So the first thing that they ask you to do is to have a fo uh, suitable folder structure. So grade 10s. I'm sure by now you have done this. You would have a folder called Pet Grade 10 2021. Um, obviously, probably with your name and surname. Then inside that folder, you must have a folder called Phase 1 and then another folder called Phase 2. This is what the layout should look like. Okay. So my recommendation would be if you haven't started on this, do all of this first in your Phase 1 folder. Create two folders called 
you know, completed questionnaire and research, then um, just create three blank documents and name them accordingly, right? In your phase two folder, um, create two blank documents, name them, declaration phase two and research report, and then create a blank um, Excel spreadsheet called questionnaire analysis. Okay, then once you've done all of that, do take a screenshot of it um, and save it into your phase one. Okay, save it as a picture into your phase one folder so that you know you've got it there. Because when we put the report together, you will have to um, put that in there. All right, once you've done that, on your first, uh, which will be your, your research report, okay, on that research report, you need to design a cover page. And that cover page has to have your name and surname, the name of your school, subject name and grade, pet topic, focus question. I'm actually going to see it because I think I have an example of a previous pet. Um, okay, so this is a very basic one. This person didn't even, you know, decide to put in a huge amount of effort. Uh, unfortunately, okay, but this is just a simple example. So there's your cover page with the info. Um, table of contents over here. We've got a task definition. We're going to talk about all these things. Um, the groupings of your questions. So this is more or less, uh, you know, the layout of what you should have. Not a very good pet um, that's been put together. But let's see if I've got another one. And should have one over here. There we go. So here is a proper cover page. Okay, you can see the individual went the route of inserting a cover page. So your first page must be the cover page. What, what needs to be on that cover page? What did we say? Name and surname, name of your school, subject name, grade, pet topic, focus question, and the date on which it's presented. Now that'll differ uh, from school to school, from teacher to teacher. Your second page needs to have a table of contents. This must be an automatic table of contents, as you can see here, so that if we update anything in the document, it'll automatically update in the table of contents. Okay. Then we create the framework, and here they tell us, uh, after our table of contents, we need to start with the task definition. Um, we'll then have our main headings. We've got our conclusion, our bibliographical information, and then our addendum, A, Right, which has a questions and source tables, addendum B, a diagram showing the folder structure. Remember what I said to you? Taking a screenshot of that, that is where that screenshot will go. And then addendum C, uh, which is where you'll have your questionnaire, survey or template. Right? Uh, sorry, survey, uh, template, which we'll talk about. So that should be the layout of your document. You'll see when I look at this one, I've got um, my cover page with my information. I've got my table of contents. I've got a watermark at the back just to show, you know, just it, it, it can be anything. Um, the idea is to have it say there, you know, that I declare that this is my own work or something like that. Um, but you have a separate declaration document for that as well. Then your task definition. The task definition, I'm going to go through in, in, in some detail, but I'll just show you there. So that's a task definition. Then the focus question. Um, in this case, you'll have the focus question and you'll have to answer that as well. Um, this one had a table of figures, bibliography. You can see all these headings were done. Um, they then went into some detail on the questions and things like that. Okay, so let me just move away from there. Right, so in your task definition, your task definition has to be font size 12. The heading must be task definition. And what you need to answer is the following, right? Um, I'll see how many words they actually want in here. Because if you go to the end of your pet document, and this is, this is very important because everything's been given to you. At the end, you look at the assessment tool. In other words, how we mark it. And here they say the task definition must be 150 words roundabout 150 words about half a page in the learner's own words and if in your 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 half a page you've answered all of these questions you get your marks so you would be saying why am i doing the investigation why because i've been asked to research the topic of fake news 
what will the focus of my investigation be? You've got the focus question there. How will I go about doing the pet? Well, I'm going to administer a questionnaire. I'm going to use Microsoft Word to create a questionnaire. I'm then going to take that questionnaire and take the results and turn it into a spreadsheet. And I'll then present all of that to whoever the target audience is. And again, in what format it will be presented? Well, if you've said that you're going to create, you know, a, a PowerPoint presentation at the end or just present a research report, um, that is what you're going to be saying. So talking about that, that is how we bring about our or create our task definition. OK. You'll see underneath that we've got research questions um, and they look at the technical aspects of your research questions and the quality. Now, these research questions, uh, let me just go up here. Your research questions just guide your search for information. Okay, so on the next page, we're going to have three headings with the relevant questions um, for your final list, right? For each heading, complete a table like the one below. So you'll have three of these tables, but the total number of questions between all three tables must be 10. So on one table, you can have two questions. The next you can have five. The next you can have the balance. That's fine. Um, the reason we have a heading for each one of them is you're going to group the questions according to that particular heading. So let's say, and, and remember, these, these are just questions that are helping you find information. So you might have a heading for the first one, um, asking what is fake news right? or defining fake news. And then your question might be, what is fake news? Is fake news real? Right. So you'll put your question in there. Um, you're obviously going to put the heading that it belongs to and then a possible source. Now, nine out of the 10 questions can have the Internet as a source, but one must have something different, like a textbook or a printed article or an online article, anything, anything like that. OK, so please um, just make sure you've got your questions sorted it's in the headings, the, the correct headings and then the sources to go with that. So with this one, remember, you must have three tables. In fact, let me I think I have one here. Let me use the. Let me see if I use oh, that's phase three. Let's see if I use this one again. Just to give you an idea. So here you can see. Here's my heading. This one has three questions. They are the questions with a possible source. OK, you've already got the heading here. So we know these three questions are under this heading. There's the second table heading questions source headings questions source. OK, and the total of these three gives me 10 questions. Right, let's continue. Then you want to gather and summarize information and data. And to solve this problem, you need to identify possible sources of information and gather quality information. So they're saying to us, we need to save a copy of each website that you intend to use in an appropriate folder. Right? Remember your folder structure, you'll save it in there. Um, save a copy of each video or transcript. Uh, to be able to use the data information to find a solution, you need to extract the relevant info and gain an understanding by summarizing the info in your own words. Don't worry, I'll explain this to you now. Then use the Internet um, and one other source. As I said to you, you can have the Internet for all nine sources and then just the one, your tenth one, um, you can have as something different. This is why they'd mention to you plagiarism. Oh, please, people, please, 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 please just be careful of that. So now that you have created this, <clears throat> sorry, now that you've done this over here, what's important is they want you to take two of those sources and evaluate them. All right. So if I go back here, uh, they want us to take, let's just make sure of this, all right? Use the internet, two different websites and one other source. So they want us to evaluate two website sources that we used over here, plus the one other source. OK, so in other words, after those three tables, you're going to create another three tables 
And this is exactly what the tables are going to look like. So let's say your, your first question was, um, what is fake news? And you said internet source and you used a particular website. This is where you'll, you'll evaluate this. So you'll put in the name of the website, web page, the URL, the author. If there's no author, just put in slash A. Um, if there's no date created, just put in slash A. And then at the bottom, what's important is for you to put a summary of the source info. In other words, a sum, a, just a one or two line summary of what information you actually found on this particular site. Okay, so you'll do that for two websites. And then your third table will be related to a particular textbook, YouTube video, article, whatever it is. But it's going to be something different to, to what you used. And remember, it is all based on these three tables, right? The ones where we did those 10 questions. So remember now, I'm going to go through this again. You've got your folder structure. You've got your cover page, your table of contents. You've created all your headings. Right. You've created now your task definition. You've put in your focus question and you've answered it. Then you've got, remember, this is now going to be addendum B. So that's the heading for these three tables. And then after that, you're going to put in another three tables, which is going to go under the heading um, bibliographical information. And you're going to do those three tables with this information over here yeah you can see what it must look like for a video source and for printed media again this is this is all in your pet document um i'll actually put a link to the pet document in the description so if you don't have it you can click on that and you can collect it there right then the last thing um i think for phase one is just administering a questionnaire so um, use a word processor and create the questionnaire provided in Annexure A, right? Um, this is where you must give out a questionnaire to 10 people. Now, this can be done digitally. That's fine. This questionnaire must have at least five questions and it mustn't exceed one page. Okay, so let me just see if I have a sample. Um, of a questionnaire over here this is just a typical one from grade 12 and here you can see it's one document that consists of 10 pages right which means it's 10 completed questionnaires and you can see what they did over here um, you just need about five questions that does not include what the person's name is male female and the age okay so those are normal things you're going to put in there what is the gender what is the person's name male you know age whatever and then you're going to put in five questions that, again, um, you, you're basically asking people around, you know, questions around this particular topic. So you can put any five questions in, but you obviously you just want to make sure they are very simple questions. And if you're going to be um, using, you know, a digital source, you what you will be asking people is just, you know, yes or no questions. Do you know what fake news is? Does it impact your life? Do you think it plays, it, it, it actually... Um, you know, plays a role in society or things like that. Uh, so that is what you'll be doing in the questionnaire. And well, great tense, then that's it. That's, that's all you need for phase one. So phase one, please remember you're going to have one document, right? That's going to have a, a cover page, contents page, your headings, your biographical information with those tables. You're going to have a picture of your folder structure in there. And you can have a separate document that is going to have your um, questionnaire. In fact, two documents, one with the original questionnaire and another one that has the completed questionnaires as well. Okay, so I hope that helps you. Um, I'll be doing another video where I'll be focusing on phase 